Hi everyone. As you may have noticed, Psychology of the Unknown has rebranded to Psych Macabre in order to better represent what the channel is about. With that being said, let's get into it. In light of the recent events that took place in Texas and New York, we'll be discussing mass murder. This video is not intended to glorify murder of any kind, but to provide understanding as to what drives an individual to commit such heinous acts of terror. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. First, let's answer the question, what exactly is the legal definition of mass murder? There are actually multiple definitions within the United States. For the most part, mass murder is undertaken via firearm. So let's tighten our scope to the definition of mass shooting. According to the Congressional Research Service and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, mass shootings are multiple firearms, homicide incidents involving four or more victims at one or more locations close to one another. However, according to the Department of Criminology at the University of Pennsylvania, mass shootings undertaken by foreign terrorists are not included in the statistical analysis no matter how many people die or where the shooting occurs, because these fall under the definition of an act of terrorism rather than mass shooting. According to Statista.com, between 1982 and May of 2022, Caucasians made up the majority of perpetrators of mass murder, with a total of 68 incidents. African American perpetrators of mass murder come in a distant second with 21 incidents. The remainder 39 incidents have been perpetrated by Latinos, Asians, Native Americans, and other ethnicities that are unclear. According to usconcealedcarry.com, mass shootings account for only 0.1% of all firearm-related homicides. In an article by the Washington Post, 1,322 victims have been claimed as a result of mass murder since August 1, 1966, when Charles Whitman opened fire on the University of Texas campus from a clock tower. The assault began when the 25-year-old architectural engineering student underwent a psychological break and stabbed his mother to death at 12.30 a.m. that morning. At 3 a.m. the same morning, he stabbed his wife, which he stated he did to spare them from future humiliation and suffering in a note he typed prior to the murders. The event ended like the majority of mass shootings, when Charles Whitman was killed by police at 1.24 p.m. that afternoon. A total of 18 people were killed that day, and 31 were injured. The website theviolenceproject.org, which was founded by Jillian Peterson and James Densley, gives an in-depth look into the statistics of mass shootings. On their homepage, they state that over 80% of mass shooters were in noticeable crisis prior to their shooting. A closer examination on the site shows that of this 80%, 40.6% were in crisis for years before their shooting, 29.7% were in crisis for months before shooting, 15.9% were in crisis weeks before shooting, and 13.8% were in crisis days before shooting. In the same study, it was found that the motivations of mass shooters have varied over time. The number one reason mass murder occurs has been due to domestic or relationship issues, which has been found to be 30% of the time. Employment issues rank second at 23%. Interpersonal conflict is third at 20%. Hate and psychosis of the murderer are both 19%. Legal issues are 13% of the time, and fame-seeking is only 7%. School shootings seem to make up the majority of the mass shootings that we hear about through social media. However, shootings that involve kindergarten through 12th grade schools only account for 13 of the total mass shooters, which when broken down into statistics is 7.6%. Colleges and universities make up 5.2%, Churches make up 6.4%, government buildings make up 3.5%, residential shootings make up 8.1%, restaurants and bars make up 13.4%, retail makes up 16.9%, and workplace shootings make up the majority of all mass shootings at 30.8%. Males tend to make up the majority of all mass shooters with 168 of the total 172 mass shooters studied being male. That's 97.7%. Only four mass shooters were found to be women, which equals 2.3%. The Violence Project also found that 52.3% of the cases studied were attributed to Caucasian offenders, 20.9% of mass shooters were black, 6.4% were Asian, 8.1% were Latino, 4.1% were found to be Middle Eastern, and 1.7% were found to be Native American. 
Out of all the cases of mass shootings that were studied by the Violence Project, 77.9% used at least one handgun, 22.7% used a rifle, 27.9% used a semi-automatic assault weapon, 24.4% used a shotgun, and 12.8% used a firearm with an extended magazine. When it comes to the acquisition of the firearms used during the assaults, 50% of the mass shooters studied legally purchased at least one gun, 32% purchased at least one gun from a licensed dealer, 4.1% purchased at least one gun from an unregulated private sale, 1.2% assembled their guns with legally purchased parts, 2.9% of the mass shooters were given at least one of their guns as a gift, 28.5% illegally acquired at least some of their guns. 12.2% acquired at least some of their guns through stealing or borrowing from someone else. 32% of the studied mass shooters used guns in their attacks that had unknown origins. Only 4.1% of mass shooters acquired their guns through a failure in the system. When it comes to how mass shooters choose their targets, research finds that the majority of mass shooters, 61.6% .6 knew at least some of their victims, 4.7% might have known their victims, and 33.7% chose strangers as their targets. With that being said, who is at risk for being a mass shooter? According to the Violence Project, 64.5% had a criminal record before they conducted their rampage. 62.8% had a history of violence. 20.9% were known bullies. 35.5% had a history of domestic abuse. 16.3% had a history of sexual offenses. The majority of mass shooters in the report seem to have employment trouble, with 51.2% experiencing such. The second most common trait among mass shooters is trauma, with 42.2% having experienced some type during their life, 34.3% experienced abuse, 17.4% had claimed to be victims of bullying, and 2.9% experienced parental suicide. Often, when a mass shooting occurs, the most frequently asked question is, did race have anything to do with it? According to the Violence Project's research, only 13.4% of mass shooters were affiliated with a hate group. 5.8% were involved with a terrorist group, 1.7% were affiliated with a gang, and 15.1% were immigrants. We often hear that guns are to blame during these incidents. However, only 31.4% of mass shooters showed any kind of interest at all in firearms prior to their assaults. 25.6% had served in the military. When it comes to the relationship status of mass shooters, the study found that 46.5% were single, 16.3% were in relationships, 18% were married, 15.1% were separated, divorced, or widowed, and 29.7% were parents of children. So what about education? That tends to be another subject that frequently comes up when a mass shooting occurs. The level of education of the perpetrator. 12.2% of mass shooters had less than a high school education. 19.2% had a high school diploma or GED. 27.3% had some college or trade school experience. 7% had a bachelor's degree. 6.4% had graduated from graduate school. 28% of mass shooters had an unknown education level. When it comes to the mental health of mass shooters, 68.6% .6 were found to have had a mental illness, with 25% of those having a mood disorder and 26.7% having a thought disorder. 71.5% were shown to be suicidal. 50% suffered from substance abuse. Of those, only 14% suffered from alcoholism and 14% had problems with both drugs and alcohol. When it comes to motivation, the media often speculates the reasons of why someone would perform such a terrible act. However, the Violence Project breaks down the statistics in that 1.7% of mass shooters were motivated by homophobia, 4.1% by misogyny, 9.3% by racism, 5.2% by religious hate, 23.3% were motivated by employment problems, 11.6% by economic problems, 12.8% by legal issues, 15.1% by relationship issues, 15.7% by domestic spillage, 
and 20.3% by interpersonal conflicts, with 30.2% being attributed to psychosis. So if we use these statistics to profile the majority of mass shooters, we find that white males with interpersonal conflict and or employment problems, suffering from psychosis or mental health problems, who are suicidal and suffered abuse with at least some college or trade school experience, are single with children served in the military with an interest in firearms with a history of violence and criminal behavior, are the most likely to be mass shooters. However, not a single mass shooter studied by the Violence Project meets all that criterion. Looking at statistics alone, one would think the typical mass shooter could be profiled like that, right? What we do know is that white males are the most likely to be mass shooters at 51.7%. Of those, only 7% are divorced, separated, or widowed. However, 29.1% are single, and only 9.3% of white males who are mass shooters have children. 15.7% of white males who are mass shooters have some college or trade school education. 39% of white males who become mass shooters, however, have had mental health problems, with 36% of those showing signs of crisis and 31.4% being suicidal. 20.3% of white male mass shooters with mental illness showing signs of crisis and being suicidal acquired all of their guns legally, with 20.3% legally purchasing at least one gun. But those who legally acquired their guns, only 2.3% used an extended magazine and only 5.2% used a semi-automatic assault weapon, whereas 16.9% used handguns. What we can learn from this is that the majority of mass shooters are white males with mental illness showing signs of crisis, are suicidal, acquire their guns legally, and use handguns more often than any other weapon. However, it should be said, that is only 23.3% of all mass shooters. In an article by Shahid and Duzer for VOA News in 2021, which examined the Violence Project's database, the authors state that mass shooters generally have four things in common. Early childhood trauma and exposure to violence at a young age, an identifiable grievance or crisis point, have studied the actions of past shooters and seek validation for their methods and motive, and the means to carry out an attack. The article goes on to state that in houses of worship, the perpetrator was most often a white male in his 40s, motivated by domestic issues or hate. He had a criminal record and a history of violence, and used handguns or assault rifles he legally owned. In schools K-12, through the mass shooter was a suicidal white male student of the school with a history of trauma. He leaked his premeditated plan before the shooting, and most often used multiple guns stolen from a family member. By contrast, the typical shooter at a college or university was a suicidal non-white male student of the institution with a history of childhood trauma. He used handguns legally obtained and left a video or manifesto detailing his intent. If you'd like to play around with the statistics of mass shooters, you can go to theviolenceproject.org. A link will be provided in the description below. Their user interface is really easy to use and understandable. It would be interesting to see how many mass shooters have matched up to the McDonald or Dark Triads over the years. However, I'm certain the percentage is low, considering those triads are more closely associated with serial and spree killers. Though the University of Texas Tower shooting that took place in 1966 is most commonly known as the case that started all mass shootings in the United States, the truth is, it really isn't. Mass shootings aren't the result of easily accessible assault weapons. As we learned earlier, most mass shooters don't even use assault weapons. In fact, the earliest known instance of mass shooting took place in 1891. In this incident, according to Mariah Hammock in her article A Brief History of Mass Shootings, on March 28, 1891, a man with a double-barreled shotgun fired upon a crowd of students and faculty attending a school exhibition in Parson Hall Schoolhouse in Liberty, Mississippi. The perpetrator wounded over 14 people, mostly children, with several of them being seriously injured. In the same article, the author goes on to state the second mass shooting in the country happened a month after the Liberty, Mississippi shootings. On April 9, 1891, James Foster went inside St. Mary's Parochial School in New York and opened fire. The students he shot all survived. The trauma they experienced left a footprint that, although undoubtedly hard to forget, was in time actually forgotten. 
In fact, several instances of mass shootings occurred long before Charles Whitman opened fire. On August 14, 1903, Gilbert Twigg opened fire into a crowd of people in Winfield, Kansas, killing nine and wounding at least 25 others. In 1913, Thomas Jones went on a shooting spree in Houston, Texas. On June 4, 1936, Professor Wesley Crow shot and killed five people in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Other instances of mass shootings followed between then and 1966, such as the shooting at Pasadena Public School on May 9, 1940, the boarding house shooting on November 6, 1948, the Camden, New Jersey mass shooting of September 1949, William Bauer in 1956, the William Reed Elementary School massacre of February 2, 1960, which was perpetrated by Principal Leonard O. Redden, and so on. To say that mass shootings are a modern problem is quite short-sighted, and to say that assault weapons and high-capacity magazines are the cause is even more short-sighted. As we've seen, most mass shooters are armed with nothing more than a handgun or rifle. I hope that you found this video informative. If so, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psych Macabre.